Oxygen sensors are devices used by vehicles to monitor emissions when paired with a catalytic converter. They're also used to measure how rich or lean combustion is within a narrow band of the air-fuel ratio. This measurement is based on the oxygen present in the exhaust stream. In most modern vehicles equipped with a four-cylinder engine, there are two oxygen sensors, typically one before the catalytic converter and one after. Some vehicles outfitted with a V6 and V8 engine have even more oxygen sensors to help monitor their systems. The oxygen sensor was first developed in the late 1970s for Volvo by the Robert Bosch company. These early sensors relied on the heat produced from the exhaust stream in order to heat up to their operating temperature. The issue with this was the latency in which sensors began to respond, since it took nearly a minute for the probes to warm up. Entering the 1980s, oxygen sensors became mandatory equipment on vehicles when the state of California realized the potential for these sensors to have a significant impact on the reduction of emissions. By the mid-1990s, every state in the United States had laws mandating the necessity of the oxygen sensor. When it was first introduced, the oxygen sensor did not offer the fine adjustments that would come later in advancements in fuel delivery. Fuel injection eventually replaced the carburetor and assisted with these adjustments needed to be made with the input provided from the sensor to the vehicle's ECU. The mixture of air and fuel can now be delivered to the engine much more efficiently, which improved fuel consumption and allowed modern electronic fuel injection and emissions control possible. For more on this fascinating subject matter, check out my two-part series on engine efficiency, which goes into further detail into advancements in automotive fuel delivery. Typically, oxygen sensors are located on an engine's exhaust system, and they help determine in real time whether the air-fuel ratio of a combustion engine is rich or lean. But despite being located on the exhaust, oxygen sensors do not directly measure the air or fuel entering the engine. But rather, when data from the oxygen sensors are used in conjunction with information from other sensors, it can be applied to indirectly determine the optimal air-fuel ratio. This closed-loop method of control allows fuel injection to refine injector output according to the real-time sensor data, rather than operating with a predetermined or open-loop fuel map. Though their placement varies depending on the engine configuration and the number of exhaust banks, for our purposes, we will use an inline engine with a single exhaust bank. One sensor is placed before the catalytic converter. This sensor, also known as the upstream or pre-cat sensor, is responsible for regulating the optimal fuel supply. And the second sensor, which is referred to as the downstream or post-cat sensor, is located just after the catalytic converter and monitors the efficiency of the cat. The process starts as high pressure and temperature exhaust gases exit the exhaust cylinder during the exhaust phase. Subsequently, the gases then travel through the exhaust manifold where it eventually comes in contact with the upstream or pre-cat sensor. At this point, let's take a deep dive into the composition of the oxygen sensor and how it works exactly to further our understanding of this complex system. Creating a seal between the probe end of the sensor and the ambient air is the gasket of the oxygen sensor, typically made of a crushed sealing washer. Looking closely, the core of the sensor is composed of a heating element and connected to a heater connection. The sensing probe at the front of the sensor consists of a zirconium dioxide sensing element which is enclosed in a steel shell. The steel shell is then encased in a protective tube which makes contact with passing exhaust gases. The sensing element is further connected to platinum electrodes and wire leads than the line of the sensor. Holding the entire assembly within the steel body is a ceramic holder which aids in bringing the probe up to temperature. As the exhaust gas travels through the drilled holes on the protection tube, oxygen molecules found in the fumes come in contact with the sensing element. While this happens, ambient air is allowed to flow through the gaps located between the wire leads via the heat connection, where it becomes heated to enable the ions to produce voltage. As previously mentioned, the sensor does not actually measure the oxygen concentration, but rather the difference between the amount of oxygen in the exhaust stream and the amount of oxygen outside of the exhaust. The variance in the concentration of oxygen molecules in the exhaust gases versus the ambient air drives the oxygen ions from higher to the lower concentration. As a result, a potential difference is generated because of the movement of the oxygen ions from one platinum layer to the other. 
So when there is a low concentration of oxygen in the exhaust stream, compared to the ambient levels of oxygen, this would ramp up the voltage to approximately 0.9 volts, signaling the ECU to increase the time that fuel injectors are open, essentially enriching the fuel mixture. Conversely, a greater concentration of oxygen in the exhaust stream compared to the ambient levels of oxygen would decrease the voltage down to 0.1 volts, causing the ECU to reduce the time the fuel injectors are open, or leading out the mixture. To summarize, these readings are a result of the movement of oxygen ions through the sensor layer, and the voltage signals sent to the vehicle's ECU determine whether the mixture is rich or lean. In turn, the ECU uses the data to oscillate the air-fuel ratio on the subsequent engine stroke by changing how long the fuel injectors are open, thus adding or subtracting fuel to maintain an optimal mixture. When an engine is operating under low load conditions, such as light acceleration or maintaining a constant speed, it is operating in a closed loop mode. This state of the engine refers to a feedback loop between the ECU and the oxygen sensor in which the ECU relies on the signals from the sensor to make adjustments. Conversely, when an engine is under high load, such as during wide open throttle, the signal from the oxygen sensor is ignored because the vehicle's ECU automatically enriches the fuel mixture to protect the engine. This is because misfires under such loads are much more likely to cause damage. In this state, any changes in the sensor output are consequently ignored. An engine running in this state is known as open loop mode. This same data is also used to reduce exhaust emissions when both oxygen sensors are paired with the catalytic converter. The ECUs of modern spark ignited combustion engines attempt to maintain a certain air fuel ratio by interpreting the information gained from the oxygen sensor. The primary goal is a trade off between power, fuel economy, and emissions, and in most circumstances is achieved by an air fuel ratio close to stoichiometric. Modern engines that utilize spark ignition are primarily concerned with three forms of emissions. Hydrocarbons, which are released when fuel is not burned completely, such as when misfiring or running rich occurs. Carbon monoxide, which is the result of running slightly rich, and nitrogen oxides, which becomes prevalent during a lean mixture. Failure of oxygen sensors, either through normal aging or the use of leaded fuels, for example, can lead to a vehicle's catalytic converter bearing expensive damage. The secondary or post-cat oxygen sensor is used to verify the operational efficiency of a catalytic converter by comparing the oxygen levels downstream against the readings of the pre-cat or upstream sensor. This mechanism is a key feature of the OBD2 onboard diagnostic standard, which constantly monitors the functionality of the vehicle emission control system, alerting faults through a check engine light. On vehicles manufactured in North America from approximately 1996 and up, a P0420 or P0430 code is a generic check engine failure on these OBD2 equipped vehicles. These codes stand for Catalyst System Efficiency Below Threshold, and depending on the engine configuration, they refer to specific banks of the engine. Generally, this can be indicative of a failed catalytic converter that is not operating at maximum efficiency. In this instance, the post-cat oxygen sensor or O2 sensor would not output a steady voltage signal. Ideally, the oxidation process that occurs in working catalytic converters results in less free oxygen leaving the converter than actually entered it, and consistent voltage output from the post-cat O2 sensors. In automotive circles, spacers or non-fallers are used to purposely restrict the volume of exhaust gases that flow through the sensing probe end of the post-cat oxygen sensor. This has the effect of reducing the amount of free oxygen the probe end of the O2 sensor analyzes, which essentially masks a failing catalytic converter. The addition of spacers essentially manipulates the vehicle's ECU into thinking the catalytic converter is working efficiently, which clears the check engine codes. However, since the honeycomb structure found in the catalytic converter is not working effectively, the exhaust products that exit the vehicle's tailpipe will contain the harmful emissions that contribute to smog. It's estimated that on average, the flow restriction caused by a modern catalytic converter system reduces peak engine power by roughly 1%.
However, the trade-off is the EPA estimates that the introduction of catalytic converters and other improvements in air quality has saved more than 100,000 lives and has led to a 40% reduction of carbon monoxide emitted by cars.